This is going to be good. Hey BJ Clean Team, it's Ryan. Welcome to my channel. This channel is everything aviation. I use my experience as a former F-15E combat fighter pilot, F-16 Thunderbird demonstration pilot, and current commercial pilot who's flown both Boeing and Airbus aircraft to just tell you what I'm seeing on these awesome aviation videos and stories. And this one is gonna be one for the record book. This thing is a crowd pleaser. That's what I would call the A-10 gun if I had a name for it. But we're gonna break down the A-10. We're gonna watch a video that was done on the A-10 and I'm I'm just going to pause it and tell you what I'm seeing throughout and stay to the very end of the video because I have a special treat for you that will include a close-up shot of that A-10 gun firing. It's going to be awesome. And before we get going, if you would, just dominate that like button for me and maybe even subscribe. To those of you who have already done that, thank you so much. You're helping me grow this channel. And to everybody out there, I just really appreciate you being here. Let's rock. This aircraft may be old, ugly, and slow, but it's one of the most feared fighters in the world. All right, they're gonna call it slow, and I guess if you're comparing it to supersonic fighter aircraft, it is a little slow, but the top speed of this thing's 420 miles per hour, so, you know, not bad in my book. To demonstrate the A-10's capabilities, the Air Force provided the daily with unprecedented access. We mounted high-definition cameras throughout the cockpit, allowing us to bring you amazing images like never before. I'm uh, Scott Redman, Captain Scott Redman. I'm an attack pilot in the uh, A-10C Warthog. So I like how they call themselves attack pilots. Essentially, the fighter pilot nomenclature comes from dogfighting. And an A-10, although it can dogfight, that's not its specialty. So they're usually attacking things, which I think is really cool. So good on them for that. Uh, we call it the hog. The A-10C has proven to be the most relevant aircraft uh, in this war that we're fighting right now. Essentially, it's a piece for the A-10 to show like, hey, this thing is worth it. It is effective because Congress was thinking of shutting it down. And I'll tell you a quick story from my time in pilot training. My assigned instructor was an A-10 pilot. The dude was great, just super cool guy. And he said something to me that I won't forget. He said, Ryan, if you need a job done, you get the right tool for the job. So if you have a screw that needs a Phillips screwdriver, you get a Phillips screwdriver. And the A-10's focus on close air support is unparalleled and it's unlike anything else. And it's uh, extremely capable of performing its uh, mission of close air support. It's the only aircraft ever built to perform that mission solely. I can fly low, I can get slow, uh, and it can handle uh, maneuvering in that uh, regime as well. So he talks about it getting low, getting slow, and being able to do a lot of different things in an environment that might be kind of compressed for a fighter jet that's flying really fast and burning a lot of gas. And I actually got to see this when I worked with the A-10 on a few different combat missions. It was really cool to see us up high in the F-15E doing fighter jet type stuff up high and this thing down low, really being able to just maneuver and get the job done down low. It was just an impressive sight and it was really cool to work with them. Its slow speed allows the A-10 to loiter over its target for hours at a time. Despite its clunky appearance, the A-10 is extremely maneuverable. We can fly anywhere from 100 feet, you know, up to around probably 20,000 feet is where we're working at as far as supporting those guys on the ground. At high altitudes, the pilots can fly in formation, break away and pick apart their targets by dropping precision guided bombs. They can swoop in to a low level tactical approach, allowing them to deliver a blistering barrage of 30 caliber rounds. The, the 30 millimeter cannon was primarily built to uh, destroy uh, tanks uh, from the former Soviet Union. 
But uh, right now, uh, it's pretty much the most flexible weapon we have. This thing's a monster, a 30 millimeter Gatling gun, a cannon on the tip of the A-10, its most powerful weapon. The pilot has to bring this plane into a dive and align that cannon with whatever it's firing at. A single round out of this gun is about that big and can rip right through a tank. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I know this guy's kind of trying to fill some time, but he's he's kind of killing me a little bit um, because he's like, this this gun needs to be pointed at the target to shoot at it. Like, yeah, bro, we know that. Uh, but the thing that's really funny is he's like, this bullet is this big. Um, the bullet's actually 10 and a half inches long. This thing is massive. So if anybody's been telling him that this is 10 and a half inches, he's getting bad information. <laughs> I'll just leave it at that since this is a family channel. <laughs> The sound of the gun is uh, one of its most identifiable characteristics. The bullets uh, actually go faster than the speed of sound. When you're on the ground, you get in a hostile firefight. Those A-10s, when you hear them coming in, it's the sweetest sound you can hear. You see the rounds impacting exactly where you told them to. You hear the, the sound of them firing. Who is this guy? I mean, did he just like step off the set of the latest action movie in Hollywood? I mean, did like The Rock and Arnold get cloned and create a super soldier? <laughs> I hope we've got like 100,000 of these guys just sitting around waiting for battle. <laughs> Dude, it's awesome. And you know that those bad guys, they're not having a good day. The plane is literally built around the gun. It's 19 feet long, weighs more than 4,000 pounds, and it's capable of laying down 4,000 rounds a minute, more than 70 rounds. I like how they point out how it's built around the gun. And when you think of fighter jets or the A-10 in particular, it's built around something. So in fighter jets like the F-15E, the F-22, F-16, it's built around a radar. So the whole point of those jets, those fast jets, is to get that radar up to altitude because that's when they can really do targeting of other aircraft and that's when they can really do their damage. So. You definitely build the airframe around the size of the radar, just like in the A-10, they're building the airframe around the size of that gun, the crowd pleaser, as I like to call it. <laughs> a second. When you shoot the A-10, the 30 millimeter, the aircraft shakes pretty violently. It feels like the aircraft's about to explode the first time it happens to you. That never gets old. Quick story on the gun. So I'll break it to you guys right now. I did put the A-10 first on my dream sheet out of pilot training. I think I would have gotten it, but there were some wing spar issues. That's like the beam inside the wings that gives the wings structural integrity. They had to do a whole bunch of inspections and do some stuff to those. So I missed my shot at the A-10 for that. But there was this guy who was like six months ahead of me and he was in the A-10 training unit. And unfortunately he washed out. And the reason why he washed out is because he was looking at the bullets hit the target. Now, most times you can't do that because you need to do what's called a safe escape maneuver. So you need to shoot and then recover. You pull like five to six Gs and you get out of there just in case there's secondary explosions or other threats on the ground. But he just stayed looking at it because he was like, I want to see these things hit because he was just mesmerized by the gun. I can't say I blame him, but uh, it's kind of unfortunate. The target is no match for the A-10's cannon. The armor-piercing rounds are 11 inches long, weigh 1.5 pounds, and travel at 3,200 feet per second. The pilot takes evasive action. He circles the target, assesses the damage, then increases altitude and climbs to safety. The A-10 is designed to survive a direct hit from armor-piercing rounds and explosive projectiles. Its entire cockpit, flight controls, and hydraulics are surrounded by 1,200 pounds of titanium. This aircraft was looking to be... Not only does it have titanium, but there's also some foam that will surround the wing tanks if they're shot. So it'll basically keep the wing tanks and the fuel in there from igniting by surrounding whatever damage is done with protective foam. So that's kind of cool. Put away, I guess you'd say, really before uh, Desert Storm 1. Uh, Desert Storm 1, the A-10 proved itself to be uh, extremely formidable aircraft as far as close air support. Raised a lot of eyebrows. The A-10's success rate was off the chart. Saddam's army watched in horror. A-10s flew more than 8,000 sorties, destroyed more than 900 tanks, and demolished more than 2,000 military vehicles. With guns, uh, with rockets, with uh, four firearms such as Mavericks and free fall weapons, uh, bombs. The 
Since then, the A-10 has played a critical role in every major conflict. There's no aircraft that we have right now that can do what the A-10 does because it was built to do close air support and because it has a 30 millimeter gun. Nothing will ever truly replace this aircraft. At Moody Air Force Base, pilots train alongside an elite team of pararescuemen, special forces that drop into hostile territory to rescue injured soldiers and bring them back alive. These PJs are incredible. Got to hang out with a lot of them throughout my time in the Air Force, just super solid. I'll probably do a video maybe highlighting some of the stuff that I learned from seeing them in action. But really cool that they're obviously involved in the pilot recovery effort, but the A-10 is very heavily involved in that as well. When a friendly pilot goes down behind enemy lines, uh, obviously the number one objective of the commander is gonna be let's go get that guy. Uh, and when that mission is launched, the A-10 is gonna be the rescue mission commander. He's gonna go lead that charge with any asset that he needs uh, to pick that guy up. Dramatic music with attack aircraft flying around. Just, it's inspiring. All right, guys, so there's the end of that video. Now the bonus video that I promised you since you stayed to the end. Let's check it out. So what you just saw was the 20 millimeter cannon. That's what I shot in the F-15E and the F-16 and that thing was really fun to shoot. The F-35 has a 25 millimeter gun, but now we're gonna watch the 30 millimeter gun, the crowd pleaser. Here we go. Ah, yes, I feel the sound waves from that are nice and rich with a tone depthness that just makes me feel like I'm inside of a thunderstorm. <laughs> I'm like the sommelier. He talks about wine, I talk about the different sounds coming from gun barrels. So as you can see, those bullets were kind of spread across that target. So in this case, most likely that's a low angle strafe. So they're lower to the ground. So as they shoot, those bullets have more of an angle to where they're gonna travel down the road rather than being in one spot in particular. So these unmanned target vehicles are really cool. I've got to shoot some of them as well. The ones that I shot had a tank pulling a dummy tank behind it. So the key there was make sure you don't shoot the front tank, bro. Don't do that because then the rest of your flight mates don't get to shoot anything. And don't shoot the chain that's pulling the tank because if you break that thing now, everybody's hosed as well. But this is some of the best training ever. So this is really cool that we're all getting to see this. So that's a nice tight grouping of bullets. So most likely that strafe was more from an angle. And speaking of being from an angle and being steep, in the F-15E, this is crazy guys, I gotta share this with you. The gun is canted up two degrees because it helps you in a dogfight. It helps you with nose position, which we'll get into in other videos. But when you're strafing the ground, you have to get even steeper to make it happen. So it's interesting to strafe in a plane that wasn't necessarily made to do close air support type strafing like the A-10. Really awesome to see this thing in action. So glad to have you guys here. Before you go, if you would, just go ahead and dominate that like button for me. Maybe even subscribe, that would help me out a ton. 
We'll see you in the next video. Most of all, have a great day.